Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Elisabetta, an Italian watercolor artist with a passion for art supplies. Today we are reviewing and swatching this small set by Kors. A very um, interesting watercolor paint with a different binder. Let's dive in. Let's open this um, very cute uh, box of six earth colors. Uh, I have a passion for earth colors. So um, when I went visiting my son in the Netherlands, in Maastricht, there was a wonderful art supply store and they sold this brand that uh, I had never seen before in a store in Italy, but only on YouTube. So I just grabbed it so that I can swatch it and review for you. There are six colors that are Naples yellow, sub green, transparent brown oxide, indigo, Venetian red, and raw amber, which is a pigment that uh, um, has raised uh, some questions in a previous video. I will put the link in the um, comments, in the notes, and uh, I can't wait to swatch them. Let's open it. I'm always a bit awkward in opening boxes. I love tubes. This is, should be six tubes. Oh, my dog. Ciao, Toto. Are you feeling great today? And uh, this is a paper sleeve with the name of the, the names of the tubes. And it says core modern watercolor exclusive binder gives a greater color greater intensity and clarity this is because core uses uh, a different binder it, they don't use uh, gum arabic but they use aquasol that is i think patented by them oh this is so pretty because uh, you can use this as a palette six tubes and on the tubes there are all the pigment informations, I would say, yes. And it's made in US. This is why it's so difficult to find. Also a bit expensive here in Europe. But um, I've heard a lot of nice things about this uh, watercolor. So I was very, very curious. There is a small leaflet with the color chart and uh, some explanations about what is core modern watercolors with this uh, uh, different uh, binder. They say that it should be very pigmented, but you can water it down to a more traditional watercolor, but it should be very pigmented. Also in the store, I could grab this uh, very interesting color chart with all the details. Uh, of pigments like fastness, granulation, um, intensity, staining or non-staining, and everything. So I, all the informations I need, I can have them here. Let's start swatching. Okay, let's start with Naples Yellow. It's made with uh, three pigments. They are PBR24, which is uh, Yellow Naples Deep. In some uh, brands, you can find Naples Yellow made just with this pigment. Then um, uh, Carbon Black, PBK7, and uh, Zinc White, PB PW4. Mm, so curious. Let's try it. Okay, Naples Yellow. PBR24 is uh, Nerthy Yellow. Uh, it, uh, Let's put this away and uh, wow it's almost a light uh, yellow ochre it's very deep it's very pigmented I have put a minuscule quantity of paint on my brush let's see when it dries if 
stays this pigmented and it has a nice uh, color variation from Maston. Let's add some here. This is a wonderful Naples yellow. I have a Naples yellow. I usually, I usually have um, a Naples yellow by Sennelier, which is much lighter. And uh, I prefer this one. I think that uh, having a tube, uh, I think I will change uh, my go-to Naples yellow in my everyday palette with this uh, by Cora. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's like a light golden ochre. I love it. The second color is transparent brown oxide and it is made with uh, PR101 red iron oxide that as you know is one of my favorite pigments. I have a whole video about uh, this paint. Wonderful, incredible flown paper. Although the paper that is the paper that I use for all my swatches is not a very good paper, it's cellulose, it's nothing special, but believe me, this paint has an incredible flaw. It just moves so well. It has um, a reddish uh, background. Actually, it, um, it's like an orangey burnt sienna. Some brands uh, use this pigment uh, for a burnt sienna, and uh, it reminds me a lot of burnt sienna by Winsor & Newton, for instance. Let me just check what uh, they use for burnt sienna. I think they use PBR7. And yes, they use PBR7, natural iron oxide. And uh, you can have, oh, I have a burnt sienna hand. And um, if you prefer an orangey burnt sienna, you could use this transparent brown oxide instead, and it's beautiful. Then we have always another PR101, but Venetian red, which should be more opaque. If I read the characteristics of this transparent brown oxide, they are not on the tube, but they are on the... Um, leaflet and it says that it is highly staining, completely transparent and granulating. I don't see a lot of granulation at the moment but um, we see when it dries. Also this paper does not favor granulation. I don't see a lot of granulation but it's a beautiful color. Naples yellow it says that is semi-opaque. Of course there is white so it is semi-opaque and also this PBR24, which is an um, Naples Yellow Deep, is naturally a bit opaque. And that's it, it's non granulating. Let's swatch Venetian Red, same pigment of transparent brown oxide, but Venetian Red is uh, opaque. So this is going to be an opaque color and it's staining. Let's see the difference from uh, transparent brown oxide. I like to have a Venetian red in my palette because it's great for bricks and sometimes opaque colors are just um, comes in handy if you want to cover something. The, of course with this Venetian red uh, is always a bit more problematic in moving. The floor is less uh, perfect than with other colors. It's typical of Venetian red. The flow is less perfect but uh, I have taken more on wet paper and uh, yes it does move nicely. Remember that, that it is opaque. It's non-granulating. Actually I see a same level of granulation that I see in transparent brown oxide. Exactly the same. It's just, there is a very fine flocculation, but uh, let, I will let this dry and I'll come back. Now we're swatching sap green, which is usually a very interesting color. And um, each brand uh, has its own formula. This is made with PG36, which is phthalo green, red shade. 
and PR101 and PY150, which is nickel azo yellow, one of my favorite yellows because yellows tend to be opaque and this is a completely transparent yellow and um, it's one of my favorite yellows. It's my prim primary yellow basically. So sap green can be very, very lovely in some uh, brands and less in other brands. And this is very lovely. The sap green is completely transparent, says the label. Completely transparent and staining. It's very beautiful. A small pigment, a small quantity goes a very long way. Look at uh, the difference between Maston and uh, the lighter values when you water it down. It's very interesting. Three pigments is a convenience green, but sap green is always a convenience green. Very nice. It's slightly muted. It's not too vibrant. I like it. It's earth tones, this palette. So they all should be slightly muted. Let's go to indigo. Indigo should be semi-transparent and uh, granulating. It's made with uh, PB uh, Phthalo Blue 15.3, PBK7, which is carbon black, and uh, quinacridone violet, PV19. An interesting combination. Indigo Blue is one more uh, paint that uh, has a different formula in uh, each brand. This is very bluish, which I like very much because I like to have a blue indigo and a gray paints gray. Some brands uh, have them close together. It is absolutely a blue. This indigo is really close to perfection. The flow on this paper is never perfect, but I'm adding more water and look at this. It's um, the resurrection of the paint. Uh, if you add more water, it just, uh, you revive it. And uh, it can be very, very dark, uh, but it can also be more transparent and lighter. And yes, it is granulating. I have tried some wet in wet here. Very pretty. Very, very beautiful. And now, raw amber. My damnation. Okay, now raw amber. Raw amber is a color that um, always leaves me a bit uh, puzzled because uh, it's a cool brown that I always have difficulties in using. I uh, have a, a small uh, quantity in my palette uh, that I have squeezed uh, from uh, a tube and uh, <clears throat> never goes down because I don't use it very much. Now that I watch uh, this version, I, I just like it. It's uh, granulating as it should be. It's uh, slightly opaque and it is also probably staining. At least the label says it is staining. Let me add some here. And uh, it's not so cool, it's more yellowish. Uh, I think that for wood, that would be very, very nice for soil, for stones. And I've had uh, plenty of suggestions from uh, my followers about possible usages uh, for raw amber. And yes, now that I use this um, raw amber, I find it uh, Charming. I, I want to try it with, especially with trees. Uh, very nice. Okay, I let this dry and I will try some mixes. Okay, I think that the most interesting uh, color to mix is this uh, Naples yellow. And uh, I will try to mix it with a touch of indigo to see what happens.
I want to see if I can get a green. Now it's quite watered down. Yes, it's an interesting green. It's uh, heavily granulating. Can you see how granulating is? Thanks to indigo. It's very interesting. Uh, I will add some more yellow directly on paper here. Now I'm mixing uh, Naples yellow, still because I like it very much, with uh, some Venetian red. Let's see what happens. A peachy tone. Let's add more yellow. And you get this peachy tone. I think that if you water this down, you can get a very nice uh, flesh skin tint, skin color. I'll try to water this down a little. This is more golden. Very interesting, this one also. I like this. And what happens if I mix this Venetian red that I have here with some sap green? Look at how vibrant it is. This is sap green with Venetian red. Yes, I thought so. A muted, granulating, heavily granulating green interesting and let's warm up our raw amber on paper directly maybe with some of this naples yellow hmm. maybe i should mix it on my palette Now I'm trying to mix some raw amber with some Naples yellow. Mm. It's a bit overwhelming the raw amber. Mm, it's a bit dull, but let's wait until it dries. Maybe some raw amber with some Venetian red or transparent brown oxide. This is raw amber with uh, transparent brown oxide and a touch of Venetian red and you almost get a burnt amber, very nice. I want to try dark finally. And I'll take some of this indigo and I'll put it with some this mixture of raw amber and Venetian red. And uh, you get a very nice gray, mm, very nice color separation, nice granulation, lovely gray. Some more Venetian red with some more Naples yellow. <laughs> a lovely peachy color. Let's water it down. More na Naples yellow. Yes. Different skin tones, you see? They're all very nice. Very nice. And what happens with the sap green? if you mix it with a touch of indigo. Yes, you cool it. Lots of different hues. Very nice. So, 
you can use this um, lovely collection of uh, earth tones as a base to mix uh, and get uh, different unexpected hues. They will all be very earthy, muted. You cannot get um, very vibrant fluo colors, of course, but that's my uh, type of uh, style. So I think uh, that um, I like very much this uh, collection of hues that you can get from mixing these colors. Sketchbook is dry. Yes, it is. Let's try. And wow, no cauliflowers, absolutely nothing. Beautiful colors. I particularly love this Venetian red, which is wonderful. I will reconsider using raw amber after this. Uh, the Naples yellow is one of the most beautiful Naples yellows I have seen in my life. Sometimes Naples yellow is too light and this is perfect, very earthy. Sap green is nice, not too vibrant, it is uh, slightly muted. It's a convenience green so you can use it straight from your palette or you can just uh, saturate it a little with this transparent brown oxide. The indigo is definitely very blue, very beautiful, very dark. You can get the wonderful darks combined with these browns and also a nice green combined with the Naples yellow. So what can I say? I'm happy I bought this and if I find it on sale, I might add some tube in the next future. Thanks for having watched the video. And uh, I'll see you in my next video. Also, if you want to support my channel to grow, don't hesitate to like and subscribe. That really means a lot to me. And uh, I'm moving to a new house next week and I will have a studio. So I promise you a tour of the studio, but I will not be publishing for a while. I haven't been publishing for a while because I was putting things in boxes and also I went to see my son that was graduating in Maastricht, so didn't have time to sketch or publish, but I will catch up in the next month. Thanks a lot. Ciao. Ciao from Italy. I'll see you soon. Ciao, ciao.